What's going on guys? It's been a while since I've done a video about Gentoo, so that's what I'm going to be doing today. And I'm actually going to talk about a concept that's pretty important if you're using Gentoo or if you're someone who's thinking about installing Gentoo, and that is use flags. You can think of a use flag sort of like how you would think of packages, but use flags actually define individual features that you would want to enable on a package. So take a package like Firefox, for example. Everybody knows Firefox because that's the default browser on Linux. It's on pretty much every Linux distribution. And as a result, Firefox has a whole bunch of features built into it by default. Because if you're on a distro like Kubuntu, for example, you're going to be using KDE as your desktop environment. So Firefox needs to be built to support KDE as a desktop environment so that I guess your window can open and not look weird and also have support for all the other KDE features. Um, same thing if you're on Ubuntu. So then you need support for GNOME and all of GNOME's features, or maybe your hardware is different. So there's use flags for hardware as well. Um, there's a use flag for NVIDIA graphics cards. There's a use flag for AMD graphics cards, so on and so forth. But when we're on Gentoo, we really want to configure our system specifically for what we have and specifically for what we're going to do. Like on my Gentoo box, for example, I don't have any desktop environments installed. I just have a window manager, DWM. So it really doesn't make sense for me to build support for KDE. Um, inside of my computer, I have an NVIDIA graphics card, so it doesn't really make sense for me to build support for an AMD graphics card on my system. And these are the same things that are covered in the Gentoo wiki. If you read it, it tells you more or less that same idea for why you would set use flags, but there are some other reasons that the wiki doesn't mention. So you get smaller binaries when you're not building all these different features into your packages and a smaller binary is good because it saves you disk space, it saves you RAM, and it saves you CPU usage. You also end up getting a unique binary. So if you're using a binary installation of Firefox, like if you emerge Firefox bin on Gentoo, or if you're using basically any other Linux distribution, you're getting a binary of Firefox. And the problem with that is everybody's Firefox binary is exactly the same. As long as you're using the same versions and you, know, you don't really change anything and you're about config, and the problem with that is if someone wants to be a hacker man, if someone wants to be a bad guy with their black hoodie up, it becomes a lot easier for them to hack that binary, to exploit it with a buffer overflow or anything else that takes advantage of memory addresses in the binary if everybody's using the same one. But if you end up building a super unique Firefox binary that takes a whole lot of different use flags out of it, it's gonna be a lot harder for that hacker man to get in and, I don't know, steal your shekels or something like that. You also get faster emerge times. So if there's fewer use flags being used, there's ultimately less code that needs to be compiled and less code that needs to be compiled means emerge does its thing faster. And if you start using Gen 2, you're really gonna wanna do everything you can to make emerge do its thing faster because that's pretty much the only drawback that I've noticed to Gen 2 so far is that Emerge can take a little bit of time. And obviously it's more minimalist, which has all kinds of different reasons why you'd want to do that. So enough talking about the benefits of use flags. Let's look at how you actually set them. So your use flags get set in this directory. Actually, let me go back one because that's the package.use. So Etsy portage, this is where you want to go. 
And you'll have a number of files in here. If you haven't set up your use flags yet, you're gonna have way fewer files than I do. You're probably just gonna have your make.conf and um, you should probably have a package.license. I forget if this one gets built by default and then um, you may or may not have your package.use as well. So let's take a look at make.conf first. <clears throat> So make.conf is where you actually define use flags globally. So here I just have a bunch of use flags that I don't want to use. So obviously not using KDE, uh, not using systemd because I'm using OpenRC, um, not using, I think this is all like stuff for a CD drive, which I don't even really use. Um, you know, I have all these different use flags that are in here to disable. So every single package that, and actually I have some that I'm enabling here, like ALSA and X. I should probably play around with those and disable them. Um, but anyway, every single package that I emerge on my system will automatically not get configured with these use flags. And you can set it in a more granular way. So maybe there's some particular packages that you do want to use a use flag for, but all the rest of them you don't want to use that use flag for. You can go ahead and work with those inside of package.use. Now, package.use for me is a directory. I created it as a directory. Some people might have it set up as a file. It really doesn't matter at the end of the day. Um, I did it as a directory because at first I thought that I was going to create a different file for each one of my packages, but obviously that got out of hand really quickly. I can't imagine actually creating an individual file for every single package that I have. Um, I sort of was doing it at first as you can see, but Eventually, everything just started getting set in my X11 no root. Um, but basically, these are packages that, these are use flags that we set for individual packages. All right, let that guy go by. So if we look at this one, for example, these are use flags that I have set specifically for Firefox. And when you're doing the auto unmask feature, you'll typically get this text here where it says, you know, required by blah, blah, blah. You'll get this stuff printed out in your terminal and I highly recommend adding it because if we look at this in Vim, this is a comment so it doesn't actually affect your file, but it helps you to recognize what this is actually set for. Because you could imagine if I didn't have these comments in here and I was only looking at the package, it would be really difficult to figure out what's going on. And another thing that I'll show you while I'm in here. So anytime that you have a package with a version number that you need to set use flags, like this is 1.6.37, you need to have this, uh, what is that, a greater than or less than, I don't know, I always get them mixed up, but you have this uh, greater than symbol and then the equal sign. You need to have that, because if you do it just like this, it's not gonna work. That's how you would do it if you didn't have the version number on it. So just a quick thing to keep in mind. Uh, if I go into this X11 no root, I think I have some where there's no version numbers. Uh, yeah, my minus SUID. And I actually don't need to have both of these here. I don't know why that's even there. And it's not going to write because I'm not root. But anyway, this is how you would set up your use flags. And the use flags that you define in your package.use actually override use flags that you set in your make.conf. So for example, you saw in my make.conf that I don't have KDE support, so there's no KDE support built globally in my system. But say for example, I ended up downloading a package that does need KDE support, like maybe um, maybe KDN Live to edit my videos. If I needed to build that package on this system, I could just 
add a use flag inside of package.use. And even though KDE is basically X'd out of my system globally, it'll still enable the KDE, uh, you know, all that good KDE code just for that specific package that needs it. So something to keep in mind, you could in theory, uh, globally disable all of the use flags in Gentoo, or maybe some you need to keep enabled just to get past the initial install, but you could in theory, disable all of the use flags and then just go through each individual package, figure out what use flag, the minimum amount of use flags you need to get it to work and then just define them all in package.use. That is possible. Now, I don't know if I personally have enough time or OCD to actually do that because um, as you can see, I have quite a few packages installed in here, but I guess we'll see, you know, we'll take a look at my GitHub and maybe one day a really long, obnoxious package.use file will make its way into there. Anyway, hope you guys learned something. Have a nice day.